Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about the two stars for Arena. I'm just going to be quickly evaluating each of them, call out which ones are the stars from... <laughs> that was a really crappy pun, but I think you get what I mean. There are definitely a lot of standout characters and I just want to make sure that I highlight them and that you guys know what to do with them. Without further ado, let's just get into it because there is a lot to cover. Okay, so let's start with Miyako. So Miyako, I guess you guys already know her. She needs no introduction. If there is any teams with physical damage, pretty much pure physical damage, you slap Miyako on. And it's really convenient because the meta right now is almost all like physical attackers unless you've got mages. Most people are going to have like predominantly physical attackers, especially from building for clan battle. And this just like dramatically boosts the efficiency of Miyako. In addition to that, all of her skills are about surviving, which is really, really good. And she gets pretty decent power spike at three stars, especially because of all that extra stats for her. She has a lot of synergies. For example, one of them is to combine her with Kuka and like it really, really makes them think. By combining Miyako and Kuka together, you've already like kind of negated a lot of the magical and physical attacking. By combining Miyako with Tamaki, which is what I really, really hate, this is another answer to both physical and magical attack. Miyako handles the physical damage and Tamaki hopefully takes out the mages before they can kill the Miyako. Combine Miyako with many tanks and you've got a store comp. I think you guys get the idea. I think the possibilities are endless with Miyako. She's just got so much survivability. She is a really, really good tank. Tamaki, Mage Assassin of the class. I'm pretty sure anyone who's ever played Arena has seen a Tamaki. Another real key unit because she is the answer to pretty much most things mages. Big utility in her TP steal and her targeted attacks towards enemies with the highest magic attack. Even if there are no magic attack enemies, she will still go for the backline, which makes her so valuable. However, this does mean that she is a little bit less useful when you're fighting front to back. So I'm saying you tank bust in or something like that, right? In regards to that, she is very, very similar to Hatsune because she's targeted, she's attacking the back line, and she is not doing too much for the front. Next, we've got Kuka, who is currently the best answer to magic comp. So I say that because she still gets melted. Like it's it's really sad, but she still gets melted because of the sheer power of the mage melt. Unfortunately, with enough damage, everything just kind of cripples, right? But but she still is technically the best answer to it. There are, however, a lot of tactics involving Kuka and a lot of counter tactics against Kuka, such as like putting her behind the Miyako, because if you have Kuka who's constantly taunting and she's standing behind the Miyako, she can offload some of the damage, right? A lot of the time, however, especially if there are physical attackers, this does mean that Kuka eventually dies. But all in all, she is really good. She just, she's just struggling because of the, the amount of damage that comes out of those mages. To end it, remember that she is a magical tank, so don't take her to tank physical attackers. We've got Mimi, she's massively underrated, and I kind of get why. Uh, she's only got like utility in a little bit of a physical attack buff. Otherwise, she just does big damage, but she has a really, really interesting mechanic where her UB attacks the first two enemies with more damage striking the second enemy. So this like, this is one of the things that comes to mind, right? Like if there is a Makoto or a Kari in that position too, Mimi could be the answer. Juice her up enough and she might actually one shot that Kari or Makoto. Obviously, if there are two tanks like a Kuka and a Miyako, you would not take Mimi into that. And also keep in mind that because you're splitting damage between P1 and P2, you're going to be like, you're probably not going to be taking Mimi into like a tank busting comp where you're wanting to get rid of the first tank as fast as possible. A lot of the time, if you're unable to take out the Miyako like ASAP, like she will probably heal up and keep staying there. Next, we've got Susana, who's got big damage with her UB. She got guaranteed hits and it's really, really incredible for like the early game. Why I say this is because the crit rate in early game is absolute dog water. Susana's UB gives her the utility of taking out the tanks really early in the game. Remember not to use her against Miyako, of course, but like, you know, I see Pekarins or I see Nozomis or I see Jun's like Susana could be the answer. Shiori, very similar to Susana, except that she's got a TP boost, which gives her a lot of interesting timings. One of these timings is actually counter to Kuka. So like when Kuka taunts, Shiori is actually able to slam a UB into her and it, potentially this actually kills the Kuka. To make the most out of Shiori though, you need to understand like her UB and when it's going to fire off and see if that lines up with when Kuka is going to get her taunt off or like other things like that, right? So, so Shiori is very interesting, but like you do need to do a little bit of work, a little bit of calculations because it gets a little bit more complex. Ari, big physical DPS. I don't know, there's, there's not much more to say, right? Like in that regard, it just means that she is a tank buster. She's a lot about the fist and less about the utility. Unfortunately, I don't think she has any utility at all. Remember that she stands really, really front. So she does get countered by like Maho or Yuki P2 blinds. And it's for these kinds of reasons that you much prefer her on attacking rather than defending because like an answer to this is just Maho. Otherwise, her main job is just going to be tank busting. Yuki, oh man, Yuki has so much utility. She's, she's like a mini Maho. That's probably how I'll describe her, except she provides like AOE physical defense down and TP boost to the ally with the most TP 
as well as a position two blind. And all of this wrapped up together, man, it's just a really juicy arena character. Everyone knows Yuki as one of the key characters for like the Yuki or Ninon comp, but like she's, I, I, I really think that she is more than that, but a lot of people disagree. She gets a lot more complex to make use of her TP, right? Because like for Saren, you just slap her next to like someone that you want to TP boost. With Yuki, you need to actually calculate like how to get her to be juicing the character that you want to be juicing, right? Because she's going to be targeting the one with the most TP. Chika is cool, but like healers are really hard to fit into comps for arena because like they just don't bring enough. Arena is already so fast paced. It's more than likely like things are just going to die and they, they won't be able to get healed up. So you'll probably see her in maybe like the more rudimentary store comps, but like all in all, she's not too common. She does give a physical attack buff, which is nice and summons a fairy, which could take some damage off of your tank. But her S2 kind of crappy because like she's just like reducing the physical attack of the front unit, which is normally a tank, which doesn't do much physical attack anyway. Eriko, similar deal with all DPS units. She just brings big damage. However, she does have one deciding cool factor. She actually brings a poison, which does true damage. And against tanks, this is really great because it ignores their defense. Otherwise, she's just another option for tank busting, though she is one of the ones that I think of because I have her built up. Shinobi is a really interesting one. She's quite good because she's got like the AoE damage on her Yubi. And more often than not, a lot of my squishier characters, they actually get burnt by the Shinobi. They just get one hit, which is really weird considering it's medium damage. She also also does provide a fair bit of physical defense down but like if you're looking for physical defense down you'd rather be running like Jun who is like you know dual purposing tank and physical defense down or Makoto who is like you know nuking right. Makoto just also straight up has more physical defense down but the skull the damn skull the skull is good because it offloads damage from your tanks but not only that just so many times my Shiori has UV'd the freaking Shinobu skull. I personally think there are better options but I'd be lying if I said that Shinobu like I haven't seen her before I've seen her actually quite a plenty. All right, Mitsuki, another star for me. She is incredible. She's got pretty good UB AoE damage, AoE true damage with her curse, which also decreases HP recovery, if you didn't know. And she also gives an AoE physical defense downfield. And this field comes up quite a lot. If there is anything that you should be hearing from all of this kit, it is tank busting. Okay, not exactly busting in that you're like breaking through it really easily, but her kit just makes her a great answer to tanks generally. Personally, Mitsuki is one of the characters that I use to climb up to the top 100s. And I don't think I'll be able to stop using her until I get mages or something. Akari. Oh my gosh, I think she is actually the savior of my entire arena career. Because of my lack of mages, I turn to like the more accessible options and Akari is one of those. She is pretty much the only way that I can counter Miyako right now. So if I combine Akari with Monica, usually, usually I'm able to kill the Miyako like almost before she UBs. A lot of the time I'm versing a lot of like three or four star Miyakos and my own Akari is only two stars. So I'm pretty sure if my Akari was three star combined with Monica, she would probably melt the Miyako before she can even UB. She also gives magic attack on her UB, which is great synergy with other mage characters. And she does give a lifesteal on next attack for that little bit of extra sustain. I personally highly recommend Akari, especially if you don't have any mages. And remember the combo, Akari, Monica is an answer to Miyako. Mahiro is a pretty funny one. So she does have like a stun and a knockback. And this is pretty funny. Unfortunately, I just haven't tried this enough to make sure it works. Otherwise, she just does like decent damage. And she also has, I think, a physical attack debuff on the frontmost unit, which is the tank, which doesn't really make much sense. However, personally, I have actually lost to quite a few Mahurus. Next, we've got Mifuyu, and she always surprises me, right? Because she does really big damage with her UB. On top of that, the UB actually has a mini stun, which is a nice bit of utility, but she also has some like large HP recovery to herself, and she actually also has more mini stuns to the front. All in all, she's actually got a fair bit of disruptions, which actually could disrupt your calculations or like your move orders and stuff. But yeah, unfortunately, I think Mifuyu is one of the more unpopular characters, so she's not really well studied. Rin is pretty cool, and she is like a mage melt answer. She gives like a bunch of magical defenses. I'm pretty sure on like her UB and like her skill one as well. But on top of that, she also gives physical attack and also has a stun, a 2.5 second stun, which is pretty decent. However, the meta to fight against Mage Melt has already been quite established. Like I'm not saying that Rin does not have utility, but like, like if you've got mages, you probably have more options. But if you don't, Rin can definitely be an answer, especially like, like you can build a team around boosting magical defense and physical attack. But honestly, I don't know if it's enough to stop the mages. All right, guys, that's freaking the two stars done. That was 15 characters characters, I think. Oh my gosh, this is, we're almost there. We are almost there, guys. Guys, remember, this is really important because like, you know, you can't just pick up team comps and just expect them to work. You need to know what each character does and what they bring to the team. Next time, we're going to get into the one stars and then we're going to get into actual tactics and team building and stuff like that. So hold on tight, guys. I know there's a lot of content, but like this is going to really help you with your understanding of the game. All right, we'll
with that being said, let's wrap it up here. I think I've gone on long enough. Got a secret message for you guys. It's, uh, yeah. give me those mages. If you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below, I would really, really appreciate it. it. Tells me that you've actually made it to the end of the video and it tells me that my hard work was actually being used. And honestly, I like that. There's not much more to say. I just really want to thank you for watching as always. If this has helped you, then like, subscribe, comment. You already know what to do. But otherwise, thank you again so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.